Hello everybody, welcome to the second video of our Express Workbench tutorial series debugging with FICO Express Workbench. Today I'll be going over the sample vehicle routing model to show the debugging features. Debugging can be initiated by pressing this debug button right here, which is next to the play button. However, once you click this button, the compiler will start execution from the top and will run until the end without stopping. In order to stop the compiler execution, we need to put a breakpoint by clicking right next to this line number here. For example, let's put a breakpoint right here. This red circle indicates a breakpoint where the compiler will be stopping during the execution. Now I can press the debug button and I will see some execution logs here. And as you can see here, now the compiler is stopped at this point which is shown by this yellow arrow and this yellow line. Currently, I can hover over my entities and see their current populated values. Currently, CG improvement threshold value is zero. My max subproblems value is 1000 on the other hand. This is because we have not got past this line yet. In order to get past this line, I will have to open my debugger section here and press step over. As I press the step over button, the compiler will execute every line step by step and move forward. For example, currently I can see that all of these entities has taken their values. The other method of displaying the entity values is just basically copying and pasting them here in the section, watch expressions. I can put this value here. I can also put a string value here and see their current values and their types. I can also put more complicated data structures here. For example, let's put a array entity, ship that. Once I put this here, the debugger is telling me that it has zero entries populated. So let's take the steps forward and populate this shiplet entity. This shiplet entity is being populated in this initialization section through XUP. To do that, I will be putting a breakpoint here and press this resume button, which will move the compiler until this point. Now I'm at this point and I have not populated shiplet yet and I will press the step over to execute this section and now I can see that my shiplet entity has 780 entries populated. I can click this drop down and I can one by one see each of those 780 entry values. Another nice feature of this watch expression section is I can put any of the array entities with their indices and track its value with the index. For example, the chip date array with the index S, I can put it right here. And at this point, the debugger will be complaining to me and saying that symbol S is not found because we are not in this for loop yet. So I'll be putting a breakpoint here and run until this point. And now it's telling me that for the current value of S, the ship date value is shown here. And if you're curious about what the value of S is, you can just put it here and you can see what it is. This is particularly very useful when you are debugging through loops. Now let's talk a little bit about the other buttons here. Step into and step out. Step into is very useful when you are working with different procedures and functions. For example, let's move on to this procedure here, which is populating the DRP data before jumping into more complicated algorithms. I will press the resume button and see what's going to happen. As you can see here, since we had the breakpoint here, we cannot go out of this loop easily. So I will be removing this breakpoint and pressing this button again. 
And now we are right in the beginning of this populate VRP data procedure. At this point, I have two options. I can press step over, which will jump over this procedure and go to the next one. Or the other option is step into. If I'm interested in seeing what's happening within this procedure, I can come here and I can press step into. Once I press step into, I am right inside that procedure. And then I can go even deeper into the other procedures as well. At this point, I am inside the populate hub data procedure. I can see a nested list of these procedures under this call stack section. It's showing me where the compiler is currently sitting at, in which procedures, in which functions. I can see a list of the related variables, like globals, parameters, constants, and if there are any local declarations within a procedure or a function, it's going to be displayed there. And also I can see a list of my breakpoints here. I can remove them from here, I can deactivate them, or if I have a long list of the breakpoints here, I can come and press the deactivate button here or activate them back, back again. Once I'm done with debugging, I have two options. I can either press this button and run my code until completion or I can come and press this red button here to stop it. Thank you for listening. In our next video, we will be talking about the communication of Express Workbench with Insight.